Okay, so after the previous video, uh, the previous two videos where we did some lemmas that um, prepared us to prove the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we're ready to prove the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So let's see what it says. It says, for all natural numbers bigger than or equal to 2, we can write this natural number as the product p1 to the a1 up to pk to the ak, where these pi's are prime, and I should say that they're distinct primes. The ai's are natural numbers, and this product is unique up to reordering. Um, so, for example, 6 can be written as 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, but we'll consider those as the same representation in terms of primes because it's just a simple reordering. <clears throat> okay, group, great. So, now we're ready for this proof. So we have two things to do. First, we need to prove that for all natural numbers bigger than 2, there exists uh, representation as a product of power of primes and next we need to show that that representation is unique up to reordering and so what we'll do first is show that there is a representation so we'll do that by way of contradiction so by way of contradiction suppose there is a natural number without such a representation. So in other words, without a representation as a product of powers of primes. Good. So if there is a natural number without such a representation, there is a smallest natural number without such a representation. So that's what we'll do. So let's let M be the smallest such number. Good. So, just to reiterate, M is the smallest natural number with which you cannot factor it into a product of power of primes. Good. So now uh, what we'll notice is that M must be composite. So if M is prime, then m equals p to the one power, but obviously p to the first power is in this form, so uh, m must be composite. So uh, we'll just write that here. So observe that m must be composite. So and then we'll just like briefly write otherwise it is already in the form. And by the form I mean the representation of a product of powers of primes. Okay good. So since M is composite we can write so um, we write the following M equals A times B so recall, a composite number is a number that can be factored um, where um, A, A and B are between 1 and M, not including 1 and not including M. So that's the definition of a number being composite. Okay, great. So now, since A and B are both smaller than M, and M is the smallest such number, that means A and B are representable as a product of power of primes. So let's notice that. So since a and B are smaller than M and not equal to M, so let's like put a not equals there just to point that out. Um, we can write A and B in the form given. So what I mean by that is the product of power of primes, but if A and B can be written as the product of powers of primes, then A times B can, and thus M can. So M uh, equals, and I'll just jump right to the end, um, PK, AK, 
um, where those numbers are built from the representation of A and B, and this is our contradiction. Okay, so good. We have proven that every number can be written as the product of power of primes. Now we want to show that um, this way of writing a number or this representation of a number is unique up to reordering. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, good. So just previously we proved that every natural number can be written as a product of powers of primes and now we want to show that this representation is unique. So let's suppose that P1 to the A1 all the way up to PK to the AK equals Q1 to the B1 all the way up to QL to the BL. So in other words, we have the same number represented as two products of primes. And so we have a couple of things to do here. We need to show that K is equal to L, so we have the same number of primes here, and we also need to show that um, each of these PI over here is one of these QI and vice versa. Okay, good. So, um, now let's notice this. <clears throat> so notice that PI divides the left-hand side of this equation, right? So, and that's true for all I. So let's write that. So for all i, and that's obvious because this is built out of the pi. So that means um, pi divides the right hand side, but I'll write that out. B1 up to QL to the BL for all i. Good. So now what that means by a previous lemma, so that tells us that uh, PI divides QJ, um, actually let's write that as uh, QR to the BR for some R, good. But it follows that that means that PI divides QR. Good, but then if one prime divides the other, that means they have to be the same. In other words, PI equals QR. <clears throat> okay, good. So that means every prime over here is one of the primes over here. And likewise, by a similar argument, every prime over here, every one of these Qs is one of these Ps. So it follows that, Um, K equals L. And PI equals QR for some R. Good. So in other words, not only do we have the same length of primes here, but we have the same primes exhibited. So uh, I'll clean up the board and then we'll get on to the next step. Okay, good. So now after some uh, reordering, so let's write that down. So after some reordering um, and renaming, we can set PI equal to QI. Um, and that tells us the following, P1 to the A1 up to PK to the AK equals Q1, sorry, equals P1 to the B1 up to PK to the BK. So recall that previously we showed that there was the same number of primes on either side of the equation and they were the same primes and so we've reordered them so they're in the same order. The primes are in the same order. Okay, good. So um, now we have two cases. Either all of these are the same so either A1 equals B1, A2 equals B2, all the way um, up to AK equals BK, in which case we're done, or there is one that's different. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that one of these is different. So let's do that. So um, by way of contradiction, suppose that AI is not equal to BI. 
Okay, good. Um, and then we might as well um, assume that AI is bigger. So also assume that uh, AI is uh, bigger than BI. Good. Um, and now what we'll do is divide uh, each side of the equation by the following. So divide by P to the BI. Good. So now P to the BI obviously divides the right-hand side of the equation. And then since AI is bigger than BI, it obviously divides uh, the left-hand side of the equation. So notice, what do we get there? So we're going to get P1 to the A1 all the way up to PI minus 1 to the AI minus 1. And then we'll have PI to the AI minus BI. And then we'll have PI plus 1 to the AI plus 1, all the way up to PK to the AK. So that's what we'll have on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have P1 to the B1, all the way up to PI minus 1 to the BI minus 1, PI plus 1 to the BI plus 1, all the way up to PK to the BK. Okay, good. So now notice the products are essentially the same except in this spot we switched out PI to the AI with AI minus BI because we divided by PI to the BI. And on the right hand side we omitted that term altogether. So now notice, um, now we have PI divides the left-hand side of this equation because we've assumed that AI is bigger than BI. Um, but that means that PI divides the right-hand side of this equation. Good, because they're the same. But that tells us that PI divides PJ for I not equal to J. So what do we have here? We have two primes, PI and PJ, but PI divides one of the primes, which is not equal to itself, and that is a contradiction. So there's our contradiction. So what did that contradict? That contradicted that AI was bigger than BI, but remember that was a without loss of generality assumption. So it really uh, contradicted this fact that AI is not equal to BI. So in fact, AI is equal to BI for all I, which tells us that um, we have the same expression on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, proving the uniqueness of this theorem. Okay, so that's the end of the proof.